finally, a member of Treyway gets sentenced. Me and the Notification Gang would like to invite everybody to come join us Monday through Thursday, 9.20 to 10 o'clock for Morning Coffee, where we discuss the events of the prior day and also just talk mess about stuff. See you then. BBN, Jack Frost, what's up party people? I so, yeah. So apparently, there has been a sentencing in the 6-9, I, I mean, yeah, the Treyway racketeering case, and it has been just now-ish Butler. Just now, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this, pronouncing this first name right. So we're just going to call him Ish, if y'all don't mind. For Ish Butler, he's being sentenced to 20 months. And I believe they said uh, about three years. Uh, first of all, shout out to Complex and Sean Sotaro for the story. That's where I'm getting the story from. Shout out to Complex and Sean Sotaro. He always does an excellent job. Go check him out. Anyway. Um, he starts off this particular article. It says, on Thursday morning, Judge Paul Inglemeyer's courtroom in Lower Manhattan was filled with over a dozen observers, many in tears, when they sentenced Jesnell Ish Butler in to 20 months in prison. Butler is the first to defendant in the 6ix9ine racketeering case to be sentenced. He admitted to his role in an April 3rd, 2018 armed robbery in the lobby of the Times Square building that houses This Is 50. A robbery that 6ix9ine reportedly filmed from the backseat of a nearby car and proceeds to which and proceeds to which was found in the apartment of the rap star was renting. Okay, so a uh, couple of things real quick. The first thing that I'm I'm, I'm gonna uh, let y'all know this is the robbery that happened when they're saying that. Um, well, actually, they're not saying, but Shadi was. I believe on film holding the gun. This is when the scum gang individuals were robbed. The scum gang. I, I don't. I'm. I. From what I hear, it was not scum lord Dizzy. There were other people that was there. He wasn't there when this happened. But there were some individuals that was part of his camp. They were robbed. They was robbed of uh, whatever was in the backpack, and um, the bag was actually found very oddly so inside of an apartment that was being rented or where 6ix9ine had known to stay at one time or another and the bag was found by the FBI I believe so in this particular apartment with I think uh, there was also some weapons found there including the weapon that was allegedly allegedly used in the shooting down at the W Hotel so um also, just something else, but there were allegations, I don't know how true this is, but there were allegations that 6 that um 6ix9ine or Treyway or Shoddy was alerted that Scum Lord Dizzy's people were going to actually be there at the building, and that's how they knew to be there and because, you know, to settle whatever beef or whatever the heck that was going on, I'm not 100% sure. But those were allegations that were out there. I'm not trying to say that these allegations are correct. I'm just saying that the allegations were out there. So uh, also he goes on to say Butler's 60 month sentence, which comes along with three years of supervised release was a mandatory minimum. So just so we could be clear on this, Ish Butler was given a mandatory minimum. So uh, I don't, I don't, I think it was one of those cases where he was guilty. They had to find him guilty, so they gave him a mandatory minimum. They probably don't even don't even care about whatever whatever parts he had in any of this, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, uh, they said the lowest possible he could be given for this plea, and that was the assistant United States. That's what they said. Um, attorney Michael D. Longyear admitted at the sentencing that out of the cases, many defendants accused of being part of the nine trade gangster bloods gang butler was at the lower end of culpability 
He acted as a driver during the April robbery and was present, Longyear said, at several other nine tray related violent incidents, including the April 21st, 2018 shooting during an Adrian Broner fight at the Barclays at Brooklyn's Barclays Center. Now, um, one more thing I want to say also about the uh, the robbery that he was actually found guilty for is that 6 9 was allegedly, allegedly, <laughs> out in the car filming the, 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 the this, this incident. I, what, I don't understand what these guys was doing. Like, hold on one second. Just one second. I'll get right back to this. I don't understand what these guys was doing. I don't understand why it was so, we live in a weird age. We live in the age, and I'm not going to say that this started in Chirac, but I think that that was basically a precursor to what we are in right now, uh, the situation that was going on with Chirac. And if you really want to understand what I'm talking about, go look at the Warren Chirac series that DJ Academics has. And, and the reason, shout out to DA Academics, and the reason why I say this is, is because we live in this weird day and age now where people are doing foolishness and they're letting other individuals, like they're documenting their crimes. They're, they, they, it's like they, they're committing crimes that they don't want to go to jail for, but they also, <laughs> I'm not trying to laugh because it's not really funny, but they don't want to go to jail for, but they also want everyone to know about these crimes. But they don't want to go to jail for them. So I don't understand. And then also, after they document these crimes, everyone else is snitching. <laughs> so I, I don't get these guys. They document the crime that they're doing, that they know they, they, know they don't want to go to jail, but they document the crime. And then after documenting the crime, which is obviously a reason to go to jail, then they also want to call people a snitch. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever, man. Anyway, uh, it goes on to say that uh, Butler's lawyer, Sean Moyer, told the court that his client was remorseful uh, for a number of reasons. Okay, so uh, if you want to check out any more of this article, go check out the articles on Complex. Sean Sotaro, that's S-E-T-A-R-O. Go check them out. It's a great article. Um, I'm not going to read any more to you because <laughs> you, you, you know the whole article. I, I, I don't even think I've read halfway. All right, so go check it out. Anyway, there's a couple of things I want to say. Um, the first thing is, in this particular article, I'm not going to read the exact verbiage, but exact words, but in this particular article, they speak about how they waited, them waiting to get uh, letters from the families about how, you know, in reality, he is a good man and they're going to miss him and he does good for his family and he does good for people that he know. That's great and that's dope, but that's not the problem, okay? Um, so I don't know how much of a weight that actually has when when they're when they're saying you're part of a criminal organization. I'm not a hundred percent sure how helpful that is. That you know your, your actual family, you love them. <laughs> I mean, not for nothing, but I don't care how evil of a person you are. The last people you're supposed to be evil to is your family. With that being said, I'm not saying he's evil or anybody else. I'm saying if someone was, the last person, <laughs> the last people you should be evil to is your own dead family. So I'm not 100% sure how that works. But also if this is the first person that has been sentenced. And as you can see, they gave them the minimum of the minimum, basically. They So this is the first person that has been sentenced. So I don't know what the, we should look forward to the rest. Maybe this is the reason why a lot of the why a lot of people wanted to move their sentencing court date back, so they could you know hopefully get letters from people I guess and you know a proof that you know yes they've probably done some bad things out of it in their life but they've actually were you know a pillar of whatever community that they lived in and they did a lot of good things and they had a lot of good deeds. So that might be why a lot of these guys want to move it back. But also. Um, I don't know what you think. I want to know what y'all think about this. I want y'all to leave it down in the comment section. I want to know what y'all think about this whole ish thing. I want to know, do y'all think, you know, the fact that he only got 60 months, that's about five years, I think. I'm not 100% sure. That's about five years, right? So he only got about 60 months and, uh, you know, then he's going to have three years of probation. Like, does that make you, like, a little curious, a little, you know, like, did he 
need to do something. <laughs> like, I'm not saying that he did. I'm not accusing him of anything. I just want to know what you guys think about this, period. Um, also, as far as this is, he only got, it was only for that one armed robbery. So, how much do people usually get for armed robbery? Somebody let me know what y'all think about this. It's real curious. I'm just, I just want to know. Anyway, um, go check out the complex article and let me know what y'all guys think. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe, join the notification game. Hashtag Bronx Bombers. Let's get it. I love y'all. Take care of each other. Hug the kids for me. I haven't forgotten about you. And that's all I got on this one. I'm out. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. If you would like to help dictate the direction that this channel takes, please leave a comment. All comments are appreciated, whether positive or negative. Thank you very much and enjoy your day. And remember, positive thoughts cause for positive things to happen. Let's get it.